Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar brought to you by TechSoft Ventures. We're going to be talking today about innovations in training delivery options with special guest speaker Jan Kahn from TechSoft Ventures. Now, before we get started, I'd like to take just a moment to explain to you the technology that we're using today. So on the next slide, you'll see a screenshot of the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. You can open and close the control panel by clicking on the arrow in the upper left-hand corner. You can also enter a question at any time during today's webinar by just typing it into the question box and clicking send. And we'll queue your questions up and then get to as many as we have time for at the end of today's session. Just don't click the black X on your control panel or it will end your session and you'll have to log back into the webinar. And now I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Jan Kahn, who is president of TechSoft Ventures. She's responsible for the overall direction of the organization. She also works with clients to develop strategic education programs that provide value to their enterprise. With over 22 years of experience with ERP systems, 17 years in the adult learning arena, Jan has led numerous ERP projects, including global SAP rollouts, public sector organizations, uh, and for companies in the mid-market. And she's also presented at various seminars, including ASUG and Wellesley Information Services. And with that, Jan, we're very happy to have you here with us today, and I'd like to turn the floor over to you. Okay, thank you, Mike. What we're talking about today is how we can change the traditional instructor-led training approach um, from a lecture and, you know, ex a lecture and then demonstration and exercises in any type of ERP or EMR type of delivery, you know, where the computer and systems play an important role. So we're going to start with formal versus informal learning, a day in the life scenarios, and we're going to actually um, look at a, a real life case study. We're going to look at flipped classroom, and the flipped classroom is something new and upcoming, and that is to address the different learning styles of the, of the new uh, millennials or the younger folks that are entering the workforce. And then we're going to look at something, this is kind of miscellaneous, but we really feel assessing uh, the learner's knowledge is, is very, very critical. So we're going to look at some creative uh, assessment options as well. All right, new ideas for the new millennials. The thing is, is that by 2014, more than 50% of the workforce will be comprised of folks that were born after 1981. And when you look at the tr traditional learning of let's tell people, let's then show them, let's let them do it, and then review them, we're going to lose the new millennials because they're really used to hands-on and very kinesthetic learning. Why? Because they've grown up on video games. The computer has been almost attached to their hips, and they are very adept at learning software and navigating around very quickly. So you're going to lose these folks if you spend an hour, two hours lecturing before you even let them touch the system, et cetera. So this old instructor-led training model is no long, longer going to work. And when you look at the other thing with the new millennials, which is really, really critical from an organizational change perspective, is that 95% of them have positive associations when they think of the word change. Now, I'm sure there's folks on the phone that are on the over 40 crowd. And when we hear change, we say, oh my gosh, how are we going to deal with this change? Because it, it becomes very stressful for, for the folks, the over 40. But the new millennials, what they do is they associate change with progress, with hope, with excitement. Because they like that evolving type and non-static type of environment. So when we look at this workforce and the new millennials, we have to really adapt the teaching style so it really maximizes the teaching. All right, what we'll talk about today is we're not going to talk about distance learning and e-learning and, and those type of approaches, but we're looking at how we can make instructor-led type of learning more, um, really have more of an impact and, uh, and, and really more successful. And one of the things that we brought up in a couple of our other, other webinars are the formal learning versus informal. And you see a lot of this. You see the formal learning certainly with the instructor led, but here we're talking about how the training uh, department or the instructor really sets the goals and objectives in this formal learning. In informal learning, the learner sets the goals and objectives. 
And when you look at formal versus informal learning, uh, learning and you look at it in the workplace, is, is there's really different delivery vehicles, like um, your Adobe Connect and those type of products where you can send out a link and folks can do learning just in bite size and chunks. So what you'll see here is you'll see that there's a big shift from the formal to the informal learning where there's um, there's seventy percent chance that when someone learns something you know, overall that a piece of that is going to be in informal learning. And in many cases informal learning happens before the formal, like like I said, using the an informational session um, and utilizing the technology of Adobe Connect or, or that type of a tool. All right, the first one we're going to talk about is day in the life training. And when you look at the purposes, we're trying to provide a process view with real world scenarios in a simulated go live environment. And what this does is this really helps the folks understand the process, but also their important role in the process. So when we look at users or providers in the EMR space, it's real important to know what happened upstream and downstream and why, why their role was key and critical to the entire process and the success of that process. So a couple of different things that we've done within an ERP applications is we have done um, role-based type of day in the life training and then end-to-end -end process. So what I'm going to do is just click on this, this role-based sample and this is an overview of what a order to cash, what what a customer service person does as it relates to the sales order processing. And really the key here with, with your day in the life is to make sure that they can transfer the knowledge that they learn in the classroom to what they do on, the, on their job day one of after go live. So here's an example of day in the life. This is just a one sheet, very quick and dirty. Because what happens is a lot of folks when we get through with the training and the education, and Monday comes around and it's go live, they say, what do we do? So they don't know how to apply the learning in the classroom with, with their job role. And what we've done here is just given them a little cheat sheet here that says, OK, we're about creating sales orders. And here's the sales order entry. And these are the, what we call the quick reference guides or the transaction-based documentation that supports sales order entry. So for a customer service worker, what they're going to do is they're going to create sales orders as well as some ship to parties. And they're going to monitor and manage the orders by status over here. And then they're going to monitor and manage the batch, the delivery batch process. So what we have is 80% of what a customer service person does on a daily basis is all here within the one sheet, as well as they find all the different documents that support their, their transactions on a daily basis. OK, so that's kind of a higher level of more of a role-based type of day in the life. And if we look at more detail in a role-based, um, the first one, they're going to be handed that as a quick reference card. OK, that's not anything that's, that per se is, has a classroom behind it. But the instructor would stand up there and they would go through this, that, uh, that job aid. On the other hand, here's a day in the life for a customer service rep that really describes the process and what reports they need to view right here in order to get their information and make informed decisions. So if we scroll down a little bit, it goes into a little bit more of the process because we have to really have some customized, client-specific, very focused process to kind of set the stage here. Because if we don't do this front matter up here, the folks will merely be pressing buttons on these, these different steps. So how do I execute? This is a sales order list report. And it goes into different steps that need to be ordered or need to be performed in order for that customer service person to do his, his or her job. So what we do on this is we, they, they keep this as performance support materials can use continuously around the jobs. 
So this is something that's in the classroom. The instructor will take that through it. Uh, once they do their other uh, day in the life processes, and again, this one is, is more just at the particular customer service role. Okay, the other type of role-based, or I'm sorry, of day in the life training is the end-to-end -end process. So the whole intent here is you have an instructor in the, in the front of the classroom, and they're really more of a facilitator. So they might have a couple of process maps and workflow diagrams that explain the processes that are going to be covered, but yet you'll have folks, in this example, we have a non-purchase order invoice entry and payment. So what we're going to have is we're going to have accounts payable folks in here. We're also going to have um, folks that enter invoices and pay invoices. And if this was appeal related, we would have the delivery folks in here, the buyers. So everyone would be sitting in that classroom and there would be clear handoffs from like when a requisition is created. And then it gets approved. So we have the approver approving that requisition. And then we'll have the purchase order and the delivery or the goods goods receipt and then the accounts payable invoice and then the subsequent payment to the vendor. All those folks with those different job roles will be sitting in that class to take part of their own of their own piece of this process and execution. And what's really important in the day in the life is these scenarios. So we have an invoice that's been received for items purchased from a non-PO vendor where taxes are applicable. So that's scenario one. Now the nice thing about Day in the Life, we don't have any PowerPoint slides. All of your data is right here for your exercises. And we have our different steps, what we're doing, what the transaction code is, what the subsequent reference guide or work instruction is that supports posting an incoming invoice, who is the role that does this, the input data, and what's the result. So what you can do here, folks, is you can help to take your integrated test cases, and they have your business scenarios, and you can turn those into this type of training materials for your users. So it's great. It helps to reduce the development efforts, and all your test groups should include these different types of scenarios as they go through the integrated testing and the user acceptance testing of your ERP or your EMR solution. So if I go down here and look at scenario two, we now have an invoice that's been received from a vendor for labor expenses where sales tax is not applicable. So the first invoice had sales tax, this one does not. And as we scroll through again, our scenario three is we have an invoice that's been received from a non-PO vendor who's paid by wire, and it'll be posted and paid by wire using the automatic payment program. So notice we start simple and basic, and then we add to it for these different scenarios. So this document is something in, a, in an end-to-end -end process type of day in the life training. This is the document that they're really going to use throughout the class. All right, so we, we, um, one of our customers is K-Swiss, and they make the tennis shoes and, and different apparel and footwear. And their approach, they have unique training needs. They had significant process changes in going from their legacy systems to an ERP solution. And one of the things they didn't want was a lot of PowerPoint slides. So what we did is we did day in the life. We used quick reference cards, which were transaction-based documents that walked them through uh, the, uh, the particular transaction and how to do it. And then we had robust exercises, much like the ones that you saw in the day in the life, where they were scenario-based, real vendors, real data on the system. Now, for longer classes, when we had, for example, um, a big customer service class that was a three-day class, we had minimal PowerPoint, but we utilized the process flows. We also had the quick reference cards and, again, robust exercises. So, for example, a customer service person will take a two- to three-day class that was role-based that would be a longer type of class. So it would be the latter one here. And then it would be followed up by the day in the life 
end-to-end -end process for all the different sales orders where they would also have the logistics folks, the warehouse folks in the classroom, billing as well as receivables and credit management. So really when you look at this day in the life, it allows the folks to take their knowledge and really puts them at their desk so they know how to apply this on day one of uh, after go live. So the results here is the learners really liked, liked the training and they liked it because it was very interactive and it was engaging. Uh, they were able to re relate that learning like I just said to their new role because typically with an ERP EMR solution your job role changes. They, they were able to be, they were confident and they would find out ways to find their own information. So they were really, the learning wasn't just rote learning, they were really thinking and able to think about what they were doing and to problem solve and apply those techniques, which is a great, great testament to this type of learning. The other thing is, is that this documentation really um, has a lot less throwaway. You know, we've seen all the PowerPoint classes, a four-hour class with 150 PowerPoint slides, and no one looks at them again. And so what we do is we really decrease the PowerPoint slides, emphasize the hands-on. The learner becomes responsible for a lot of their learning. They have better retention, and we have, we have a, a lower to uh, total cost of ownership, or TCO. And this uh, case was is out in California, so you know certainly we're all green. Um, but California is certainly the catalyst with that, so it supports the green movement as well. And what we found from a cost perspective, or a time, and time is money, is the development efforts were reduced 20 percent, and the delivery time was reduced 11 percent. Why? Because they got it, they understood it they were able to apply it. And part of the reason the delivery was decreased was because of the fact that we were able to leverage these integrated test cases and really put them into a nice format, a uh, little bit more end user ready, and then we had to build our data loads or our data sets to support the day in the life training. Okay, the, the second that we're going to talk about, second thing that we're going to talk about or different type of instructor-led training is something called the flipped classroom. And what this is, is we have over to the left here the traditional classroom. And you can see the teacher or the instructor pretty much lecturing and the students sitting all there in a row listening. And the flipped classroom is where the, it's more collaborative. As you can see, the students kind of talking to each other. The instructor is not at the front of the classroom, but rather working with the students, not talking to, or in some cases, we know how folks get uh, are talking at students. And what this does is this, the technology allows us to save some classroom time by flipping the traditional classroom. So as an example, in the traditional classroom, classroom, we start with lecture, and the whole class is really lecture, maybe some hands-on, and then the students may have homework in a traditional um, K through 12 environment. But what's happening is the instructor is, um, they are videotaping their lectures. The students watch them off class time. They do their homework, and then they come back, and the activity is going over the homework reinforcing and reiterating. So this all started in the late 1990s where we have more peer type of instruction, where your peers in the classroom can also be folks that you learn from, not just the instructor or the teacher. And then in the 2000s, you had some professors, etc., that came up with this flipped classroom idea. And, and again, the, the intent is to leverage technology, save classroom time, and have more impactful learning. The average lecture format, uh, there's only 5% knowledge retention. And we've all been there. We've all sat through two-hour, three-hour classes either, either in, um, in high school or college, and we've all sat through them in, in any type of ERP or EMR implementations. And what we're doing here is we're making the, the learners a bit more active. 
So for example, if I look here, it says technology enables the learner to view the videos. So they can see the videos as often as they like. They can grab and grasp new concepts. And then they can do the homework, or they can, um, they can do any type of activities as a result of watching the lecture. The instructor spends more time helping the students instead of lecturing, wondering how many, how many students are or aren't getting uh, what, what the professor or the, what the instructor is talking about. It also offers a way for the instructors to share information with maybe others outside the classroom. So it promotes that repeatable model that we're all after when we look at any type of sustainment in ERP or EMR solutions. And then we look at, um, again, the learner can rewind lessons and, and, and everybody learns differently at a different pace. And um, they can come in, and uh, some folks may need to see it three times or someone else maybe once. But the other thing it does, it really creates a collaborative environment. I can't tell you how many times I'm in a class and I have a question, and I hate to ask it because I think it's a stupid question. Yet out of 10 or 15 folks, three or four other people had that same question. So this collaborative learning environment is we all learn from each other. So here's really how it works. The employees would watch a um, watch an instructor, for example, talk about the different sales order types in their system for an ERP implementation. And they can watch it at their desk at their own pace. They can communicate with some of their peers at their desk. And they also uh, may have some online discussions, so either via social media or a collaborative learning management system. You can ask questions, you can post answers, and again, creating this collaborative environment. When they go into the classroom, the instructor becomes more of a facilitator, and he or she will help guide them. And they, they, work, they can work in groups and will guide them on any places that they got stuck. They will also continue to drive home that foundation uh, that they had learned from the lectures and, and doing some of the exercises out of class, and then give additional, more robust and challenging exercises that they can do in class. So this really takes the lecture out, takes the instructor out, where the instructor becomes more of a facilitator coach. So for example, one of the ways, and again, this started really in the academics and in, in, in the education system here in the States. But the way, uh, way that we applied it um, into the business uh, workforce is one of the uh, clients that was implementing an ERP solution, they were in higher education. And what they did is they used Adobe Connect, so a video type of tool, and they separated all the process changes from the training and, what, and these folks had to take uh, like these 10 minute little sessions that described in a particular area what was changing, what, what was changing from a process perspective to ensure that the, that the learners or the users took those. What they did was is they put them up on their learning management system and they were considered a class. Because one of the fears is, is, oh, you know, they're never going to take it, and folks are going to come to class, and they haven't taken the prerequisites. Because the lecture and any type of work outside of the, the section certainly becomes a prerequisite. It worked extremely well. The reason why it worked well is students were not, the users were not struggling with problems while they were trying to key in all their, and do their exercises. They understood what was changing. Training reiterated that, and they were able to move on along uh, into their exercises and really understand the whys behind it, not just the hows and the keystrokes. Learning really took place and was maximized because they were able to separate that and reinforce those process changes um, within the training. It wasn't their first introduction to it. The pros and cons is uh, learners learn their own ways. They deliver knowledge to other learners. That's the perception spoke of earlier. Puts more responsibility on the learner and reduces class time and reduces rote learning. Why? Because the collaborative environment really fosters learning and everybody learns from each other. So the, the uh, negatives are, well, will they actually watch the lecture? And that certainly needs to be controlled and you, you need to have a good model wrapped around that. They certainly may zone out 
and there's no ability to raise your hand when you get stuck. You can mitigate that with the social media I spoke of earlier, and it does because you put the responsibility back on the learner for the prerequisites. It requires self-discipline. You also must get buy-in from an organizational change perspective from the managers um, to allow these folks to watch the lecture while they're at their desk, maybe to huddle around with three or four of them and then deploy the buddy system. Okay, a couple things that we've seen with assessments is uh, we're big on assessments. Uh, you don't want to do any type of training uh, without assessing how the learners are doing and what type of competency they exhibit. So there should, there, there should be knowledge checks after each unit, and the assessment would be a capstone. If there is remediation training, you want to assess any current knowledge, develop the training, and then the assess the learning. So you want to do an as is and to be in part um, really to develop the training uh, and target the training to their, the, the um, areas that uh, they exhibit the least amount of knowledge. And then you want to assess the learning afterwards to get your delta. A uh, couple things that we've done, we've involved first line supervisors and they would, if their, um, for example, their employees let's say their customer service workers had to um, input and create sales orders, the first line supervisors would run reports on the ERP system and they would assess and look at who did their uh, sales orders and who did them correctly. That got the first line supervisors involved. It worked extremely well with this one client. Another client had an assessment week. So before they went live with SAP, they went through all their, their role-based training and uh, the week before go live, they came back and did their tests or their assessments. And what they did in between is they had little labs and facilitation labs where they could practice what they learned in their role-based training. So the assessment week, right before they went, uh, before they went up live on the system, they, they took the uh, assessment test. It was all graded. If they needed to take it again, they took it again that week. So again, something that was very, very um, different than what we've, we've done in the past and yet very effective. It, and I can't stress enough how important it is to, um, to go ahead and um, involve the first-line supervisors. So really, our focus today was the day in the life and a couple different approaches, the role-based day in the life, as well as the end-to-end -end process, reducing your documentation. And then we talked about the flipped classroom approach, which again can be applied in the uh, business world, uh, that one example of separating your process changes from the actual training uh, within a particular organization. Well, thank you very much, Jan. We do have a few minutes for Q&A right here, and there's a couple of questions that have come in. The uh, first one that's come in is, do you find it more effective to combine the day-in-the-life approach and the flipped classroom approach, or is it better to pick one over the other? I think it depends on the difficulty of the content, depends on your organizational culture, because it is important in the flipped classroom that they do their pre-work. Um, so I would more, I would, I would really look at it by difficulty of content, length of class. Much like when we decide e-learning, when do we use e-learning and when do we use instructor-led, um, you wouldn't want to do all, um, all of the flipped classroom style or all instructor-led or all e-learning or distance learning. I, I think you have to choose by role and by length of class and com complexity of subject matter. Thank you, Jan. I think we have time for one more question here. Uh, how receptive have you found management to be to the into in of integrating these new approaches? Uh, again, it depends on culture. I've seen a lot of folks embrace it, and the reason is have a little fun with it. Um, you know, it's it, it's multimedia. I think it's easier sitting through a video than reading uh, you know 20 pages of documentation. Uh, you know, these lectures that from a flipped classroom approach that are videotaped, it doesn't replace great instruction. You know, the, the, the instructor or the teacher should make, you know, be colorful, should try to keep their interest, um, and, you know, you can chunk it up a bit more. And I've seen a lot of folks with the videos and all this multimedia, a lot of organizations really gravitating towards it. 
Thank you so much, Jen. We are at the 30-minute mark. That's where we wanted to stop for the day. So with that, we appreciate all of, you when, all of you coming out here and being with us today. We also appreciate, of course, Techsoft Ventures for presenting today's web seminar. And we look forward to seeing all of you at a future Techsoft Ventures web seminar very soon. And with that, we wish you all a great afternoon.